for, I think for the writer going forward as a novelist is that you, after a while, most of your friends are writers or artists, and you live in a world of writers and readers. And it, <laughs> I, I never really want, I don't want to write a book about a writer. Um, it seems to exclude anyone who's not a writer to take writers that seriously. But there's something, I, so I kind of look for stealth ways to write about writers. Um, and, and I think actually in some way everyone, all the main characters in the book are writers, but I think they're not, they don't call, only one of them is called a writer, he's a minor character. Um, and in the same way, Here's the thing, I, I, I don't think any novelist, even, even, even Stephen King or James Patterson, they're not writing for all Americans. They're writing for the same kind of Americans in these books. And then within that, that nice, large, but not 100% segment, there's a, there's a smaller audience that reads trade paperback fiction. Um, and, <coughs> as it was mass market paperback fiction, and which is no longer a distinction. I realize that the whole time so well, but you know what I mean. This crowd. If this crowd doesn't know what I mean, then I just have to stop using that phrase. Um, <laughs> and they are, uh, readers are to some extent, if so facto, estranged from American culture because um, because reading is, is slow, it requires a long attention span and requires you to sort of check all of the electronic distractions uh, while you're engaged with it. And, and characters kind of are the same thing. It, it, it's, you can write, and people are writing interesting fiction about people who are just incredibly plugged in, <coughs> electronically engaged, incredibly distracted. But I, I think there's a whole world of emotional possibilities that is excluded if you focus on, on characters in that position. So you, there's this other artificial thing you do, I do where I will say, like in the case of, main, of the, one of the main characters, young Pip, um, I just have her growing up in a cabin in Northern California with a mother who doesn't approve of television. So, so she becomes atypical in that way, broadly speaking, but I think for, for the audience of people who might find their way to the book, she's not so atypical, she's more recognizable. Um, so there's an artificial, there are all these kind of artificial things you're doing, hoping to get away with. Um, so I don't, I don't know if she's a typical young person, but um, it's not like she doesn't have a, a handheld device. Um, but, you know, there are all these conventions. People are not generally as funny or as well-spoken in the real world as they are on the page. Um, and uh, they're not quite...